Breaker blocks are the most powerful tool that ICT has to offer if you know how to use them. And if you clicked on this video, then my guess is you're like most traders and you know that they work, but you struggle to implement them and actually be able to make money using them. And in this video, we're gonna solve that for good. First, we're gonna talk about how not to use breaker blocks because most people use it completely wrong. Next, we're gonna talk about how to implement breaker blocks and give you a full entry model on how to trade them. Most ICT traders know how to spot breaker blocks. I mean, maybe even you know how to spot them, but you don't know how to spot the right ones. Now I've solved this with something I like to call confluence theory. So we're gonna go over, break that down step by step so you actually can pick the right breaker blocks and trade with higher probability. But enough of the chit chat, let's go ahead and hop on a chart. All right, so let's hop right into it. Today we're gonna talk about breaker blocks. Now these are some of the most powerful, but also some of the most misunderstood tools in the ICT universe. So first let's go ahead and talk about what they are. So what is a breaker block? Well. A bullish breaker block or a bearish breaker block is really just the last candle before a sweep on liquidity and then a reversal. So if we're talking about a bullish breaker block, it is the last up candle. So think a bullish breaker block needs to be an up candle. So if we look right here at this bullish example, we have a last up candle before a sweep of liquidity, right? Then we get a price reversal. Now we're going to talk about how to determine what a sweep of liquidity is and how to determine whatever price is actually reversing. That way you're able to correctly use breaker blocks because most people do this wrong. Now it seems pretty simple, right? Well, while this is very simple, this does not necessarily mean that the breaker block is higher probability. Now, one thing that I want you guys to realize is that just this right here, right? If I can teach you any ICT concept, any trading strategy, anything where it's just a simple little pattern, and that alone will not turn you to a successful trader, okay? The whole idea of ICT is to not be a pattern trader. So while I am using this to, to show you, you know, what you're looking for, it's all about context, okay? So we're gonna talk about today how this can be the most powerful tool that you can use, but only if you're able to avoid the common mistakes that most traders make. So before we move to this next part of the video, I want you to ask yourself something and then pause this and leave it down in the comments. And then I want you to reflect on this after the video on maybe what you learned. So first, how do you confirm a sweep of liquidity? When I say sweep, I mean a point of liquidity that's going to get hit, right? Like we hit at a low that we're gonna reverse, okay? Versus when the market displaces through a low and we expect it continue. Now. I want you to ask yourself, how do you confirm when a breaker is activated? Because when we look in hindsight, it's really easy to say, yes, okay, the candle came down, we traded into it right there and then went down. Or right here, yes, we went up, down. I mean, it's easy to say in hindsight, but like at what point was it this candle or what was it that triggered this breaker block being activated? So again, just to kind of recap, a bearish breaker block is the last down close candle before a sweep of buy side liquidity. So buy side liquidity just means highs, okay? So a down close candle, before a sweep of this liquidity, which was this high, right? And then the market reversed, okay? Now, the bullish breaker block is, again, the last up close before a sweep on sell side liquidity, which is just lows. So we've already talked about the what. Now let's talk about the how. We're gonna break down the how into two key phases. Now, the first we're gonna talk about is how not to use breaker blocks. Yes, it is more important to know how not to use them before we go into the next step, which is going to teach you how to trade with high probability. Because as with most ICT concepts, breaker blocks are super overcomplicated and people find themselves struggling to use them when they actually can be very, very good if you use them correctly. So let's go ahead and hop right into that. So let's talk about how not to use breaker blocks. The first thing we're going to talk about is to not use them without a key level. So let's go ahead and hop on a chart and that way you can take a look at what this means. So looking at this chart on NASDAQ, first, I want you to pause the screen and try to find a breaker block based off of what we just talked about. All right. So pro tip, when you're looking for breaker blocks, look for big sweeps of liquidity, right? That take out a lot. So there's something I like to call the tap sweep and shift. So let's say if you have a key level, right? This could be an old high or a fair value gap. Let's say the market taps up into it. Now, if it barely taps into it, even if the market shifts down, most of you guys have been in trades like this. The market will hit your key level, right? It hits your key level and then just shifts down and you take a trade. Let's say you get in right here and the market comes out and stops you out only to continue on the way that you wanted it to go. It's because you didn't wait for a tap, sweep, and shift. So in this example, what you would want to wait for is the market to not only rush out local liquidity, right, but tap into a key level. So let's look right here. So right here, we have a sweep of highs, and then the market rapidly moves to the downside. So 
we got this breaker block right here. Now we're going to talk about later in the video and answer those two questions you asked yourself of how do we activate a breaker? So we'll get to that in a second. But remember, it's that last down candle before the sweep of buy side liquidity and a reversal. Okay. Now we're going to, again, we're going to talk about how to define a reversal. So be patient. Now, Notice how not only we ran local liquidity right here, we ran into this local liquidity right there in the form of that high. We also took out a bunch of old highs, right? So that is another key level. And then if we were to go on a four hour or a daily, that is a very, very key level. Now I want you guys to identify why this is a key level, not just because it's the daily, but it's because the previous week's high, okay? So that was the previous week's high in that example. So that makes it a time-based level. Now previous week, previous day, uh, previous session, highs or lows are all very, very valuable key levels. So it did not only just sweep this local liquidity, but it tapped into a key level. This is very, very important whenever you're trying to trade breakers. Now, maybe you're doing this on a one minute and it's sweeping into a 15 minute level. It doesn't really matter the time frame pairings you're using, just that you're trading into some kind of higher time frame key level. And it's not just a simple pattern, right? If you just use this, you're going to get stopped out a lot. So after you'd extend this out in time, watch what the market does as it reaches up into it. You can see that it gave a massive reaction. Now, look what else was formed right here. Another breaker, right? We have this candle right here that forms a breaker. The market digs back into it and then rapidly moves down, okay? Notice how we swept out these local highs right here. We swept this out, then you got that breaker. So you always want to sweep the local highs and tap into your key level. So let's talk about the second common mistake that most traders make when they're trying to trade breaker blocks, which is trading without a confluence level. So what is a confluence level? So let's go back to this example here on the chart. So a confluence level can be another level telling you the same thing that the breaker is telling you. Because at the end of the day, what are we using this breaker for? We're just using it as a reference where the market might reverse. It's just our form of finding a reversal point. So what are other ways the market can tell us that we're going to reverse? Well, if we look at this example, we also have fair value gaps, right? So the market was not only in a breaker, but it was inside of a fair value gap. Now let's look right here. The market was inside of a fair value gap. So when you have two levels telling you the same thing, this is what you can call a confluence level. Now, this pattern has also been called the unicorn pattern, whereas there's a breaker plus a fair value gap. And it's a very high probability trade setup that is very, very powerful because you're using confluence levels. Now, the breaker plus the fair value gap, what it's really showing you is the true reversal in price because the reason we wanna make sure that we're using a fair value gap, okay, is the whole idea of a breaker block is that you know we're running out some liquidity and we're trading into some old key level and the market is going to reverse. So if the market's truly going to reverse, right, if this is really gonna hold, what do we wanna see? Well, we want to see displacement because as I've talked about in my other videos, manipulation means the market would likely reverse. Like for example, if we barely came down under a low, like we barely pipped down under it, the market would likely reverse and go higher. We don't want to be a part of that. So if we want to get a confirmation, the market's going to move lower and be very confident. We want a displacement. We want a big push and fair value gaps are likely created in those big pushes. So it's a nice trick to always require a fair value gap with a breaker block that you're using because it's just an overall higher probability that the market is truly reversing. Now let's talk about the third most common mistake that traders make when they're trading breaker blocks. And that is they trade without clarity of what side of the curve that they're on. Now, what does this mean? You know, whenever I say the curve, so what is the curve? Well, the curve is just the right side of a market maker model, right? So once you're on the buy side of the curve, meaning you're bullish, you're only going to look for bullish breakers, right? There can be a bullish breaker in a setup like this. There's going to be a bullish breaker in a setup like this. Now, if you're not aware of market maker models or anything we're talking about here, that's fine. I will leave a link to the video that I made on this entire board down in the description. I'll also leave a link to this video, which talks about displacement and manipulation, which is what we were just talking about a second ago to determine whether the market's going to reverse. But finish this video first. Don't be a strategy hopper and watch another video before you even understand this one, okay? So come back to this later. So now that we've talked about how not to use breaker blocks and you're not going to go out and make a lot of the mistakes that most traders make, let's talk about how we're actually going to use breaker blocks successfully. So let's talk about how to actually use breaker blocks. Well, of course, like we talked about before, you wanna make sure you're clear on what side of the curve you're on. You wanna make sure that local liquidity and key levels have both been swept. But now let's throw in a couple more. Well, you wanna make sure you're trading during the kill zone. So the kill zone for indices or futures like NASDAQ and ES, it can be 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Now, 
I refine this down further to about 9.30 to 11 a.m. That just gives me more of an edge. I'm not saying that it won't work all day, but those are usually the times you see those big reversals. And again, breakers are to plot reversals because if we're using it whenever we are you know, on the right side of the curve or in a market maker model, or we're getting a big reversal, that's likely going to happen when there's a lot of volume in the market, which is going to be in that first hour to hour and a half. And last but not least, with a confluence level, aka a unicorn, okay? There's a reason that this has its own name and that so many traders have traded it so well. It's because it is very powerful and it's just a good principle you can use that is stacking your PD arrays or your levels, your ICT levels um, together. That way you have higher probability. So let's talk about some clear rules. A breaker is not confirmed, and this is where we talked about in the beginning of the video, going back all the way to asking you, how do you confirm a breaker, right? So remember what you said then. Let's see maybe if you've even figured out the right answer, or maybe you got it right in the first place and you're just an ICT genius. So a breaker is confirmed with a market structure shift, candle closure, or SMT divergence. Now, let's talk about SMT divergence. It's just when correlating assets are moving in a way that's not correlated. So for example, ES and NQ, which is what you're looking at here. We have NQ on the left, ES on the right. They usually move together. But notice in this example, this was at the same exact time of day. In this example, ES made a lower high while NQ made a higher high, right? That is not correlated. So if there is a break in correlation and it's at the highs, that would be bearish. Now, let's say if the market, you know, one of them made a lower low and one of them made a higher low, well, that would be bullish, right? So these can be used to confirm breakers. So notice right here, there wasn't a sweep of liquidity, okay? There wasn't a sweep of this high but we still had a breaker that was respected, okay? Now this high doesn't have to sweep up this high if there is SMT. In fact, this is actually gonna be the most powerful way that you can use this. If you combine SMT with everything we've talked about, you will get the highest probability of any trade setup you can find. So if you're looking right here, we also had a breaker and then it pushed down and notice what we didn't have. We didn't have a confluence level. We didn't have that fair value gap. Now, I wanna be very clear that sometimes this can work without a confluence level. And I know you're probably thinking, well, you just told us not to trade with them, but I wanted to explain to you why it was important. And now I'm gonna to explain to you that SMT can kind of override that. And this is a very valuable concept that you can learn if you can just understand what you're doing when you're trading is you're using different confluences or different things that are telling you the same thing to stack up your trade. And you can kind of grade your trade based on how many confluences you have. Let's say if you have four or five confluences telling you the market is likely to go down, well, that's going to be a higher probability than if you only had one. So you can basically forego or bypass requiring that fair value gap if you have SMT divergence. So think of it, that is your confluence level, right? SMT can be a confluence level. It's really just two things telling you the same thing. Again, only use brokers when local liquidity and key levels are tapped. Only use when the market maker model is clear or when a fair value gap is present. Now, of course, SMT divergence can overrule this. Now, let's look at some examples of some high probability breaker blocks right here, like we just talked about. We don't have a fair value gap here, but there was SMT, okay? That's actually the example from right here. Now, looking over here, we have this breaker block right here that was this last up candle before the run on stops. And there was this very small fair value gap right there nested inside the breaker. You wanna watch for the fair value gaps that are nested inside, right? Cause there was one up here as well. Now you could have used that, uh, this example that worked very well, but I prefer the ones that are nested inside of the breaker block area. So you can use these for trade entries. You can use it for bias. You can just use them like you would any other ICT tool. Also, the link to this entire board is for free down in the description. Just click the link and you can get access to this. That way you have the notes from this video. And before you go, I wanna give you guys an example of something. So right here we have this book, How to Climb Mount Everest. Now I wanna ask you guys something. If you read this book, what do you think your chances are to be able to climb Mount Everest? I mean. Genuinely, what do you think your chances are if you just read this book, you have no climbing or, you know, mountain climbing experience, do you, you know, what are the odds of you getting to climb Mount Everest? Now let's talk about another scenario. Let's say you meet up with this guy who has climbed Mount Everest over 10 times. You should look this guy up and it's also an amazing book, but he's climbed Mount Everest 10 times. Let's say if you were to meet up with him and climb with him every single day, multiple days per week and learn everything that he had learned along the way, what do you think your chances would be of being able to climb Mount Everest versus if you just read the book? Now, that exact logic is why I take on serious traders to mentor them directly. I trade with you live. I have a trading psychologist that's in the group who's also a best-selling author who meets with you every single week to make sure your mind's right. 
I review every single one of your trades to make sure that you're trading correctly. I give you the exact strategies that I have used to make my success. And I also hold you accountable through your trade journal, through tracking your habits to make sure that you're not only transforming as a trader, but as a person. And at the end of the day, what this really comes down to is just you actually implementing what you've learned because you could watch this video, but we both know if you go out in the market and try to implement it on your own, the chances of you succeeding with it are a little lower than if you do it with somebody over your shoulder. So if you want to become a funded trader in 12 weeks, then go ahead and click the link down in the description and get on a call with me or my team. And again, the link to this board is down in the description. So go ahead and make sure to download that. And at the end of the day, regardless if you go the solo route or if you decide to work with a mentor, just remember that trading is hard and it's, you know, you don't need to pay for education. If you want to do it on your own, that's fine. It may take you a couple years instead of a couple months. That's just the name of the game. But no matter what, I'm going to be posting YouTube videos twice a week. So make sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video and comment any other topics that you want me to make. I post videos every Monday and Thursday at noon Eastern time. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.